Hey everyone! So welcome back to the second guest of from Friday. In this case, we're going to be going to back to Ohio. I know, of course, a lot of grass and murders happen in Ohio. Look, it's not me. Y'all just be doing some weird stuff in Ohio. And so this case was apparently well known at the time. There was actually a at least two thousand people searching for our victim when the murder happened, sadly. And so I thought it was a pretty tragic case, but apparently, um, it is considered a landmark case in foster care. And so I'm giving my take on it, and let's go get started. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed. Think you're something out of my nightmares, standing right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? So basically, Marcus, uh, basically, start, sadly, actually, we're going to start with the victim. Um... Marcus Faisal was said to have been born June 24th, 2003. He had his mother, Donna Trevito, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And he had two siblings, Michael and Peaches. Apparently, he has a brother on his father's side. But the father's name was, I'm sorry, the brother's name on the father's side was Jonathan. But he's not really mentioned. So, it's not that he's irrelevant. It's just I really didn't find anything about him or Michael or Peaches. I guess the main story is kind of on Marcus, right? So, so he's living with his mother for like the first three years of his life. Uh, Michael, sorry, wow. Marcus is said to have suffered from autism. So then, of course, obviously autism, he had to have more attention than the average child. And so Donna was apparently seen by a neighbor to be often, like, crying from being so exhausted from dealing with Marcus because obviously he requires so much attention because of his autism. And so, uh, because, remember, he is autistic, he did go to a school for special needs children. So he's at the school he was getting the attention that he did need. So that's good by people who are trained. Um, Donna was sadly in, in a physically abusive relationship at the time. Apparently there was a period where in late 2005, the police were called and they apparently had noticed marks into Marcus. Marcus. And so apparently, um, and during one of these calls, the police would find the house like infested with fleas and had feces. I don't know if it was animal or human feces. It didn't specify, it just said feces. So you know, obviously feces mean poop, so... You can imagine that picture. On January 4, 2006, Marcus would apparently fall out of the second story window, somehow still living, and only requiring stitches on his chin. So that wasn't bad enough, apparently, on August 22nd. Apparently, so somehow Marcus got out of the house and was wandering in the street and almost got hit by a car. So also that's, like, very serious. So then, at this point, Donna, Donna's like, I can't do it. Uh, basically turns in custody of, like, all three kids to, like, I guess what we would call CPS, and she gets custody of Michael and Peaches back, but not Marcus. I guess she wasn't trying to deal with, like, I guess not with the fact that he had autism, even though it said she kind of didn't want him because of it, but it was harder to raise him because of the autism. And so, so of course, um, Marcus has to go to foster home, and then he goes to the home of Liz and Carol, damn, Liz and David Carroll. So, Liz was born March 24th, 1976. Uh, David is not publicly said when he was born, but he was married to Liz, of course, and he suffered from bipolar disorder. Of course, they did not know this because, of course, that would disqualify you from even owning a foster child. And so, of course, that's something that not not a lot of people are going to be ready to mention. And so, a woman named Amy Baker would also be living with the couple at the time this incident happened. Uh, she was born June second, two thousand eighty-one. Her parents had apparently divorced around the time she was six. Uh, she had four sisters. She apparently had finished up to about half of her 10th grade year. Uh, she apparently had tried to go get a GED, but never apparently was successful from what I read. She did go marry a Brian Baker on April 12, 2001. Apparently, uh, they would have three kids together, and the two would, of course, eventually separate with the kids going into custody the state after the incident happens. So, um, something that's frustrating about the case, uh, in June of 20... 2006, which I don't know how uh, they weren't notified about this, but David was arrested on domestic violence charges, which, of course, you know, you can't exactly have that if you're being a foster parent. So that was not, they were not told about it for obvious reasons. And so, because apparently Marcus was the only child they were fostering. Apparently there's another child in the home too. And apparently you get um, income if you're a foster parent. So that was, it. apparently neither one of them were working. And apparently that was like their sole income. So you know how it is. Um, uh, I hate this so much. Um, on the faithful day of August 4th, 2006, apparently the Carols were going to a family reunion. So they had their child they had together, the foster child, and even their dog. Yes, the dog. But they did not bring Marcus. In fact, they proceed to, and bear with me, 
They proceed to tie him up, wrap him in a blanket, put him in the closet where temperatures were said to have gotten between 105 and 110 degrees. So you can imagine that's, that's really hot. And he stayed in there for three days. They came back. He was dead, of course. So then, of course, because like no food, no water, but a fan to keep him cool. So I guess they thought he was just going to be still alive, but like barely hungry, I guess. But no, he died. So they proceed to try to repeatedly burn his body, basically try to cremate him, make it like nothing's really left. Uh, whatever was not cremated was put into the Ohio River. And then they apparently had burned it in this chimney. And apparently this was Amy and Davis doing, according to testimony later. I saw on August 10th, because remember at this point, Marcus is already dead. But of course, this poor case caseworker does not know this. They are here for apparently weekly checkups on Marcus to see if he's even still alive. Not to obviously make sure he's alive, which he's not. But they don't know that. And Liz apparently tells the caseworker, like, hey, no, he's sick. He... He's sick and he sleeps, so he's not available. So the caseworker just turns away. He's like, okay, whatever. So then they leave, not knowing Marcus is actually dead. And so if you were in the Ohio area or you know someone's in the Ohio area, you could ask them about this. If they were old enough during time, they might remember this. This was 2006, so almost 20 years ago, but might be able to remember it. Basically, on April 15th, August 15th, 2006, Liz claims that she was at the park with four kids. She would claim Marcus is there, which we also know is not true because he's dead at this point. So, Marcus, her biological child, another foster child, apparently a child she was babysitting, they were at the park. She suddenly passes out from, like, low blood pressure or whatever. Somebody, obviously, they get medics to her attention. She wakes up and is like, oh, no, there was four kids. Because they tell her, she got, we got, we got, your three kids are safe. She's like, no, I got four. Where's the fourth one at? And then I guess she mentioned, like, I guess she mentioned that he had autism because there was, like, like a big search going on. Because I guess, obviously, if you have a condition, they're obviously going to be, I guess, more likely to look for you because, like, you're more at risk. Like, something is more liable to happen to you. You know, if that makes sense. And so, obviously, there's, like, and plus, this is a child we're talking about. Like, a three-year-old child. So, there's, like, this big search, like, over 2,000 people. So, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty big. And so, the search dogs helicopters, the whole, the whole thing. And so there was a businessman apparently by the name of Jeff Ruby. Um, apparently he offered like $10,000 for anyone who had information about where Marcus might be. The search was officially called off on the 18th. Apparently there were people that were suspicious that because they saw Liz there, but they did not see Marcus. They just saw her and the three children. So they were like, and this was before you passed out. So, you know, understandably they're like, it's not, dots are not connected. And apparently Liz wanted to make people think she was innocent, which apparently, obviously, we know she's not, but the public doesn't know this. Because they're suspecting her, but they don't know the full story of what happened yet. And so she goes on the air, which the police apparently even tell people in similar situations, do not go on the air, even if you are innocent, because the public will attack you and think that you are guilty. Because there are people who actually are guilty, and you have went on live TV pleading for their children to come back safe, n despite knowing that their child is dead, where their child is, how they died, who killed them, and all that stuff. So Liz basically goes on TV, ba basically begging for Marcus to come back, if anybody knows like where he is, hoping the person that did take him have good intentions, which, you know, obviously, if they took a child with autism, they all we both know, you and me, whoever's watching this video, you and me both know that person did not have good intentions, if Marcus was legitimately taken. And then also... She basically had pretty much said that I'm closer to his stepmom. I'm closer to his biological mom. I may be the foster mom, but I'm basically closer to him than his own biological mother, Donna. Remains of his body would be found by M Mike Kales, who apparently that was, um, they apparently had used his chimney to burn the remains of Marcus. So his body remains were found. It was confirmed. Apparently there was like enough bones to like create a hand. And so they were somehow able to confirm that it was in fact Marcus. So then, of course, Liz and David on the on August twenty eighth are charged for involuntary manslaughter. So on September fifth, this is still two thousand six, by the way. Yeah, two thousand six. A lot happened. Uh, September fifth. September fifth. Donald files a five million dollar wrongful death lawsuit against um, Liz and David, Amy, a uh, Lifeway of Youth, which apparently was the, an organization involved in. Putting Marcus with the Carols, you know, David and Liz, uh, Butler County Commissions and Butler County Children's Services. Uh, whether or not she even won, because I know you're probably wondering, did she win? Did she win anything? Trust me, I want to know that too. Couldn't find anything, but I thought it was useful to know that she filed the wrongful death lawsuit. Uh, somehow, I guess because they were charged with manslaughter, not murder, they got a plea deal and was like, 15, you get 15 years to life. David took the deal because he was like, look, if I don't take it, I'm getting life or death because this is the death of a child we're talking about here. Liz was like, we're going to risk it and go to trial. 
Liz goes to trial. She gets 54 years while David gets 15 to life. On August 21st, 20, 2007, so now we're in 2007, the chimney that was used to burn Marcus' remains would be taken down. It would be created in a memorial in memory of Marcus, which, you know, that's pretty nice. So, obviously, people were leaving, like, flowers, cards, teddy bears, typical stuff you leave at a memorial when somebody dies. That same memorial will wind up getting taken down in October of 2007 by the same man that basically found the remains of Marcus because apparently that was his property. and He was claiming people were leaving cigarette butts. So, while it's nice that people were leaving, like, uh, cards and bears and flowers and, like, notes and stuff, like, the good stuff that you normally leave, there are people that are leaving bad stuff, and apparently there was enough of it to where Mike was just tired of it, and he just teared the whole memorial down. So, the memorial's, like, no longer there. Now, the organization, Lifeway of Youth, will, of course, have their license taken away, which, as they should. In 2009, don't know when, but apparently some point in 2009, Amy would actually give up permanent rights to all her kids. Uh, this happened in, in 2009, and I think, like, the youngest being, like, four when the murder of Marcus happened. They're, of course, all adults now. Uh, Amy, I don't know if I mentioned this, she got out on, she was off on all charges at by this point due to, in exchange for her testimony, she basically got what is called immunity. So she was free on all charges. Uh, Liz would say years later, I don't know how many years later, but it had been after 2018, because apparently David had said it first in 2018, in a 2018 interview, she had said that she went out to go, like, do errands, and then she came back and David had to tell her that Marcus was dead. She goes call 911, as one does, but Amy had apparently threatened her and said she'll kill her and her kids if she calls 911. She is said to visit her kids once a month, which I don't know how that works if she's in jail, but okay. She is still legally married to David, and they apparently communicate through mail. She apparently was eligible for parole in September 2000, 2022. He was thankfully denied, and apparently he'll be eligible for parole again within a decade. I say within a decade because it's 2032, and we're already almost halfway through 2023. So, less than a decade before he'll be eligible for parole again, and will most likely be denied. And so, of course, Amy, not Amy, Liz won't be get, able to get out until 2060 at the earliest, assuming she's still alive, because she was born in 1974. 74, 76, 1970 something, okay? So, yeah, that was the case, the tragic uh, case of Marcus Fischel. I hope that, I, I'm so hoping I pronounced this right. And so, yeah, it, yeah, so I hope you guys learned something new. Uh, I guess if you see something, say something, of course, because the, the children are our future. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! So with the play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing, and my heart's black and blue from the bruising. I feel like when I'm with you, I'm losing. I feel like you think that this amusing, sitting there gaslighting and confusing. Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry, the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you, I knew this When I'm with you, I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded Silhouettes of you are like a dawn Never really know just what you want with you, I don't ever feel calm I can feel the sweat inside my palm Play with me like that and a string You don't understand the pain it brings You don't ever wanna give me wings You don't ever wanna set me free But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead Baby, you'll get